everybody, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools and DIY channel. Hope everybody's doing fine. Uh, did you read the title? Best Building Trades to Get Into. How many of you out there want to get into the building trades? Let me know. Come in the chat. Let me know. Come on in. This is the Calibrate Tools and DIY channel where we're dedicated to teaching you how to use a variety of tools. Uh, we promote the trades, especially the building trades. And, you know, we also want to give you all kinds of information based on your home improvement needs. How's everybody doing today? Come on in, hit the like and subscribe button if if you uh if you shot if you feel the the unction to do that. I would really appreciate it to get the message out what this channel is all about. It's about getting people back into the trades, our youth especially. We got a lot of, you know, lost souls out there that need direction. And I personally think that the trades, getting into the trades or learning a skilled trade is a very good way to find that direction. It's kind of like, I don't want to say it's like going into the military or anything like that, but, you know, it kind of gives you a structure, man. And I've seen it change people's lives. Okay, not that you have to go into the trades, but that that's what this channel is all about. It's about learning how to, you know, uh, build things, okay? Use tools and all that great stuff. Come on in the chat, say hi, um, you know, acknowledge the channel. Uh, if you're listening, I appreciate you listening in. And uh, please hit the like and subscribe button, like I said. And once again, the title is The Best Building Trades to Get Into. But let's kind of recap why right now is probably one of the best times to get into a, get into a, a skilled trade or start, you know, at least looking into it, you know, especially if you're uh, coming out of high school and uh, you don't know exactly what you want to do, but you're attracted to uh, more vocational um, types of uh, work, you know, um, vocational training and all that stuff. So... Uh, let's get into it, but let's look at the climate of what happened in the last, I don't know, last 20 years or so. There are two, I'd say two major economic um, upheavals that happened that kind of opened up a lot of opportunities for people. Like they say, in every economic downturn, there's going to be uh, opportunities. Whether it's opportunities to make money, opportunities to change your career opportunities to change your lifestyle, whatever. There's always opportunities out there, no matter what's going on out there, okay? It's just a matter of perspective, and it's a matter of uh, opening your eyes, training training yourself to see these opportunities because, you know, you can be a doom and gloom person or you can be a uh, glass half full person and, uh, you know, uh, take advantage of whatever's going on out there. So in the last, I'd say, I don't know, 20 years, we had two major economic downturns. We had the Great Recession, uh, anybody remember what that was? The Great Recession, um, 2008, I'll say 2007, 2008, when the housing bubble burst and uh, everything went to you know what, right? Um, then uh, fast forward to now, we had the great, uh, the great P word, the great, pand <laughs> great pandemic, right? That happened as well. And um, in, uh, in, in, in a lot of those cases, or both of those cases, um, the skilled trades industry uh, experienced uh, experienced some upheavals as well, right? I mean, the cost of materials uh, went up, um, you know, all kinds of things. A lot of old timers, they got out of the industry and, um, you know, uh, that created, a, that left a vacuum. That left a vacuum just like it did in the pan, uh, this, this recent economic up, upheaval, great pandemic, that left a big vacuum uh, that still needs to be filled. Like back in 2008, uh, the construction industry took a dive. I think about three years later, around 2011, it started to pick pick the pace back up. And but it never quite caught up steam again. And then when it got hit with this last um, this last economic upheaval, um, it got hit again. Okay, but like I said, a lot of opportunities opened up. It weeded out, kind of flushed out a lot of. Uh, a lot of people, and it opened up opportunities for uh, new blood to come in. But it's been difficult. It's been very difficult to get people into the trades, despite all these opportunities that are out here. And that's a matter of perception of the of the whole dirty jobs thing. And um, one of the, one of the reasons uh, I have this channel is to promote the idea that hey, you can really make a good career for yourself if you know a skilled trade, not just go work for a company, but you can gain enough skills to go start your own outfit, start your own business and really do well for yourself and your family. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, that's what happened, guys. You had you had uh, the housing bubble back then, two thousand eight, and then you had uh, this this most recent one, um, which we all know about, right? Opened up a lot of opportunities. A lot of old timers got out, and they um, they stayed out. <laughs> which hey, Daryl, Daryl the finisher. How you doing, Daryl? Good to see you. Glad for coming, popping in. Appreciate you. Yeah, so. Once again, I'm just on here to uh, promote the opportunity to a lot of people that may be on the fence about getting into the trades, especially young people. Uh, from where, where I'm from, I see a lot of uh, guys that are and gals that are uh, really looking for direction. Sometimes college, you know, it's not really for them. It's not for everybody, um, you know, and uh, at least the formal education part. And but if they learn a skilled trade. Uh, uh, they they can really they can really do well for themselves, right? And, and it doesn't cost as much. Sometimes these programs may takes maybe a few months to get certified, and or you know develop the skill. Especially if you have, if you have a mentor or you get into an apprenticeship. Uh, and sometimes you can get into some of these unions that um, all you got to do is maybe work six weeks out in the field somewhere, and you know pay the fee, and you're in, man. You're in. And once you're in some of these unions, you don't you know it's kind it's uh. It's not hard. It's it's hard to get out, right? So it's kind of, you kind of solidify the path for yourself, right? Um, so, yeah. So um, right now, some of the, the best trades to get into is uh, um, concrete masons, right? A concrete mason, uh, otherwise known as a bricklayer, um, electricians, and plumbers. I think those are three categories that are in, in the most demand right now. In the most demand, and uh, you may say to yourself, "Well, man." This heat wave going on. I don't want to. I don't want to get out there and 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 die of a heat stroke. You know, I think it's about ninety degrees where I am right now. I don't know where. Hey, Daryl, what's what's how hot is it, how hot is it where you are, Daryl, the finisher? Yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That heat's no joke, right? And you may not want to get out in that that heat, but let me tell you, you get the you get the certification, you know, and and you you put in you put in the work, and you can set yourself up. You can definitely set yourself up, guys. OK, so, yeah, I mean, with, with the, the whole economic uh, upheavals that I spoke of, you know, uh, a lot of people aren't going out and buying new houses and stuff like that, you know, so. But they need to fix the one they need to fix the one they got. Right. That's where your skills come in. If you get certified and whatever, like I said, electricians, plumbers. Uh, brick masons, just to name a few. I mean, HVAC guys, appliance techs, you know, um, all these, all these, these, these trades have so much opportunity in them. So much. I mean, you, you get the skill, you put the time in, and the time freedom is on the other side of that, right? You can call your own shots, and all that good stuff. Doors wide open now. I couldn't get in when I was younger. <laughs> there you go. I, I totally feel. You. I remember going out to the. Um, I'm on the East Coast and it's been a, a hot, super hot summer. I bet, man. I bet. Especially if you're like in New York or something, all those tall buildings are. Like New York is like probably like an oven right now. And uh I feel you on that. But yeah, I remember when I used to go out to the uh uh down in down South Florida, I used to go to the uh Longshoreman Hall. And of course there's a process to get in there. Um but you know, you'd be wait you, you wait around for days and never get in that thing. I mean nowadays man they're they're looking for people right they're they're, they're putting their uh, putting their feelers out and especially if you know somebody if you have a family member that works in in some of these unions you got a foot in already you got a foot in already guys, right so yeah yeah guys so what you want to do guys is you really want to research what what uh what's going on on out there as far as trade skills that you may have, may be interested in, that you may want to get in, because that labor shortage, that labor shortage is still around, guys. You got millions, millions, millions of jobs that still need to be filled, okay? Um, and they're looking for people like crazy. The other, the flip, the flip side to that though is, uh, if these these contractors can't find enough skilled workers to fill to fill the ranks, they're not going to bid on a lot of jobs, right? They're not going to bid on as many jobs because doesn't make sense to if you you know to get a job that you can't complete because you don't have the manpower to, to uh, complete them so 
we kind of kind of you got to work with the uh with the the conditions here you know these jobs are out there these opportunities are out there to build your skills and but if they're not being filled then it kind of hurts everybody right i mean the more <laughs> Any any type of shortage, like like I talked about in like I think a couple of videos ago, any type of shortage, the supply and demand dynamic kicks in, right? So, if there's a labor shortage, then you know price is going to go up. I mean, it helps the it helps the uh, the uh, the worker. He can demand a higher higher price for his skills. Right? It helps him in, in that way. And that's another reason why you should look into getting into the trade skills right now. I mean, into the trades because it's like a um, you know, how there's the buyers and the sellers market and the housing market. Well, it's it's the workers. The workers have the upper hand right now. OK, the employee has the upper hand right now because of the shortage. Right. So if you if you're a, a person that's that's uh, willing to get out there, put in the work, you're diligent, you don't give up, you don't you know, you persevere. Um, you know, you can start off with with a, with a decent wage. I work at a uh, I work at a nonprofit where we teach. Um, people how to weld right we get them their welding certifications and um you know some of the guys are going out there getting jobs uh 25 dollars an hour 20 23 dollars an hour 28 dollars an hour and they're they're getting on with some some well-established companies okay and it in a month they didn't have anything in a month right in a month they just came off the street or whatever no direction Go through the program that we have for them, some, and, and a four-week program, welding program, to get, to get certified with uh, AWS, American Welding Society, to get their get their search. And uh, you know, we have a little job placement uh, uh, going on as well. And uh, we placed uh, quite a few people, and they, you know, man, I see the life change. I see the life change. Okay, and so yeah, it doesn't take us long. And if you want to go to school. At least, you know, have an income to kind of back that up, right? You don't want to get into debt right now. Debt, you know, if you know how to use debt, great. You're one of those people that say, yeah, well, um, you know, I listen to uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I listen to Kiyosaki and I'm going to use debt like that, right? right? Guys, listen, don't, there's no, there's no shortcut, okay? There's no shortcut. There's levels to this thing. And um, just get it, get your foot in the door and get that income and use that income you can leverage it into other investments right you can leverage it into other investments and i've, I've seen you know like i said i've been in the trucking business as well and I, i've i've seen people come from other other professions you know doctors lawyers you know accountants and they they want to they want to jump in a truck and drive you know i i, I don't get it but i kind of get it right uh they want they want to change a lifestyle or something like that so yeah i mean there you know guys you got to take advantage of this you got to take advantage of this labor shortage uh and go out there and get you a skilled trade you know get get a mentorship and you can be good to go but that you know i can say that all day but it's not happening as fast as as fast as it should right and there's reasons for that guys they took the trades out of schools it's you know the like I said the perception of it is not uh, it's not a glamorous thing and no it's it's not always a glamorous thing but what's wrong with working with your hands what's wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that it's very honorable and if you play your cards right you don't have to be the lowest man on the totem pole you can start your own outfit okay you can start your own outfit Daryl the finisher I'm the handy I'm in the handyman business it's received a bad rap over the years I'm changing that in my area there's good money in it yeah absolutely daryl there is a lot of good money in that i mean people will pay you to come in and fix things you know repair things even build things and you can charge them man you can charge them uh, and if you do good work you, you know it's, man you can write your own ticket right and it's the whole thing about business right you can be a, a just a one one man show but you know if, if you have if, if you have the desire to grow and scale you can do that too you can hire guys you know and this just farm them out to the to your clients right to your customers and uh you sit back and uh you don't have to sit back if you like doing the work but you can really 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 build a viable profitable profitable business you know in the handyman world or any any trade skill i mean it, like like a plumber right 
man, if you're good, man, if you're good, if you're, you're an appliance technician, you're good. I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, HVAC guys. I mean, come on, this is look what's looks what's going on now with the heat wave, right? You can you can go out there and rack up. You can go out there and rack up, guys. Okay, and uh, you know, once again, a lot of people they they uh, okay. I'll put it like this: you gotta you gotta get some things out of your life first, right? If you want to get certified in some of these trades, right? Like if you're out there, you know, if you're out there like uh, smoking uh, smoking weed all day and everything like that. I mean, you can't expect it. I mean, because a lot of a lot of these places. You got to go through a background screening. You got to go through drug testing. Uh, sometimes they look they look for your references. Of course, you know they want to know what your experience and skills are, and then if you have any prior certifications or licenses. You may not have any prior certifications or licenses, all right, um, and all that. But you can get that. You can get that later. Um, that's the whole goal. But you don't want to walk into the door and, and and get get take a drug test and you're you're immediately disqualified guys that's that's not it some people you know they feel hey i don't have the talent to do this believe it or not you can uh, for instance welding for instance it's not hard, that hard to learn the basic welding skills right and a lot of these jobs these welding jobs they don't you don't necessarily have to learn all the processes all the different welding processes you know you uh if you like a certain one certain jobs just look for a certain one like aeros usually aerospace if you get into the aerospace world a lot of guys that come from the nonprofit I work with, they got jobs at SpaceX. And uh, SpaceX is in aerospace and it's a lot of TIG welding. And, uh, you know, we teach that at, we teach that where we are too. And uh, a lot of guys, they specialize in that. You want to specialize in, I don't know, uh, more uh, uh, building skyscrapers or stuff like that. You can you can stick welding and flux core welding is, is for that. You know, you can, you can focus more on that. And... Uh, yeah, like I said, I seen you know we we placed a lot of guys out there and gals. Okay, I'm not I don't want to leave out the women. A lot of a lot of women come through the program too. Young women, uh, older women, they come through the program, they get certified, and they go out there and they get a job and they love it. They love it. They're really dedicated to it. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Don't judge. <laughs> don't judge, guys. Yeah. So, uh, hey guys, come on and chat this Calvary Tools and DIY channel. We're talking about some of the best trades to get into right now based on the labor shortage that's that's going on. There's always opportunities out there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, anytime there's an economic downturn of any sort, you got to learn how to, hey, see that as an opportunity, right? See that as an opportunity. And whatever the crowd's thinking, you think the opposite, right? It don't, you know, somebody may look at it as a dirty job. You, you're looking at it as a six-figure opportunity. You know, uh, you, want, you, wanted that, you want that, that house, you want that piece of real estate? Well, a lot of these trades, you know, they'll get it. They'll get it for you if you stick in there and get certified, and you don't have to be in uh, so much debt, over, you know, like with a college degree to get there either, All right, guys? So, I urge you, young people, especially from the so-called underserved communities. I mean, come on, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to put that label on yourself. You got to learn how to serve yourself so you can serve others. Get it, guys? Learn how to serve yourself so you can serve others. Yeah. Very good life notes. How you doing? Handyman will always be needed. Absolutely. Yeah. Handymen are are loved. Especially if you're handy in your house and you, you have a you know you have a family. I mean, <laughs> come on, man. You know how much money you can save with, the, with those skills? And you don't have to be like born a handyman. You can learn it, especially with YouTube University, right? Go ahead and check out my channel. Go ahead and subscribe. I talk about a lot of things you can learn. Uh, Daryl the Finisher, I haven't tried. I haven't hired anyone yet because my daughters work with me. Wow. He said his daughters work with him. He said my daughters work with him when I need help. That's beautiful, man. You got your daughters working with you. And, um, you know, the, 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 the women I see come through the program, um, they're great. You know, they're great. Um, I see, you know, the, 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 the youngest young lady I've seen come with, come through the welding program. She was 13 years old and she got certified guys. Can you believe that? I mean, I, I could, you know, I had to give her a hand for that. She stuck with it and she came from, you know, she went to a continuation school and, um, you know, continuation schools are for sometimes for people who, you know, maybe having trouble in the regular, regular, uh, 
school system, so they put them in continuation schools. Uh, but a lot of these continuation schools, believe it or not, they have facilities for these students, right, that are not in the regular school. And I was like, wow, this is you know. So, yeah, I mean, they had a, a, a tool shop. I haven't seen a tool or wood shop in years. And when I went to that continuation school, they had one and it was, man, it was it was one room, but it had like every like all these tools in it. And it had plumbing mock-ups, it had ele electrical mock-ups, it had, you know, circular saws, all kinds of different things. They even had a solar panel mock-up. So they're learning these things in these schools. And this 13-year-old girl, she got a wel welding, um, she got a welding certification. And it, and it was, I was like, wow, man, imagine if she sticks with this, she'll be a a expert to know, you know, to the to the nth degree at 13 years old. I mean, it's, it's crazy. You know, I wish I had that stuff when I was 13. Right? I, none of that stuff was around when I was 13. Right. I just, you know, but hey, more power to him, more power to him. All right. Very good life notes. So cool. My dad taught me a lot of things to do with my hands. Yeah, that's great. Like I said, you know, uh, uh, a lot of these a lot of these women, they, they are so skilled Big, uh, I, I just want to say big ups to the women that are, that are, have the skills, especially ones in the skill trades. They know how to do things. The handy women and the handy men like Daryl, the finisher there. You know, I want to say uh, I really I'm proud of you guys. And um, we need more of you. We need more. We need millions of you out there. We need millions of you out there. OK, because um, it's sad. You know, I, I go around my community and I, I see, uh, man, I just see so much dysfunction. It's 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 i don't want to say it's depressing but it's um in in a, in a sense it is right because there's so much talent out there that's just misguided that's lost that's bottled up that's been that's been um you know that's not going to come out because of everything that's on top of it all the negative uh self perceptions of, you know and all that the low self esteem and stuff like that and just uh just the the misguided the misguided uh uh education that you know that they they got from whether it's the streets or whatever it is you know they come from a, a dysfunctional household and uh yeah it is very disheartening period of life notes and uh you know one of the reasons i one of the reasons i uh started the channel is to kind of combat that um because you know just want to do my do my part guys do my part so yeah guys once again they got so many, so many opportunities out there. Don't just look at, uh, don't just look at universities as your only way, right? You can do both. You can do both, guys. Some of these programs don't cost as much, and they, you can use them. To, you can use a trade skill to pay your way through school if that's what you want to do, right? If you want to get that law degree, you want to get that medical degree. You know, you can be a, you can be like Daryl the finisher, the handyman, <laughs> and pay your way through uh through med school if you want, if that if that's your dream. You know what I mean? So I say, look into it. I say, look into it, guys. Look into it. Yeah. So once again, guys, I'm going to recap. Come on in. Come on in if you're watching. Say hi. Say hi to Daryl, the finisher. Say hi to Perry Girl Life Notes. Uh, if you want to come in and just say hi, that's fine, too. I'm here on Tuesday at 7 o'clock every Tuesday. And we tackle topics, topics like this. Um, so it's not just about tutorials like I do on my tutorial videos and stuff like that. Sometimes I like to, you know, one of the reasons I did the live is to get to know my audience and uh, connect with you guys more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, or, you know, more direct basis and communicate with you guys live and see where you're coming from. At way, at way. Yes. Good to see you coming in here at way. Yeah. So what do you think guys? What do you think about what, what I'm talking about here? I love your input. And um, do you have anybody in your life that that you that you think is uh, kind of kind of waffling between paths? And they don't know what they want to do. Is it possible you guys can, you know, share the message? You know that they may hey maybe you want to learn a trade, right? At least keep yourself occupied learning something, learning a skill that will pay you later. You know while you really while you make up your mind. You know what I'm saying you want to use your time productively, guys. Time slips away. I got a buddy of mine. He just turned. Uh, he turned a big five zero, and uh, you know, they turn around. Hey, where'd all the time go? Yeah, huh? where'd all the time go? You got to use your time wisely, guys. Time waits for nobody. Okay, 
time can be your best friend or you can be your worst enemy, right? If you, how you use time. If you use time wisely, it can be your best friend. It can set you up for life and you make the right decisions. It can set you up for life and you, you'll say, man, I'm so glad I made that decision. You know, it was hard at first. I was waffling at first, but I went ahead and I pulled the trigger on that and look where I am now, right? So make that decision, right? Make that decision and just stick with it. Stick with it. Time will go by regardless. It's going to go by regardless, right? You can't stop that. So why not use it, right? Why not use it to your advantage, you know? I'll throw an, an analogy out there, guys. If, if, if you're in a sailboat out on the ocean and, and the waves are crashing and all this and that, and uh, if you know how to uh, – hey, Perry Girl Life Notes, I appreciate, I appreciate that super sticker. Thank you very much. Very good life notes. Appreciate you. L. Harris, 5-0. Yeah, big, big 5-0. That's right. Uh, you just turned 50. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna call you out like that, but uh, you know, I just you, I just I'm just stressing the whole time aspect. You know, you gotta use your time wisely. So if you're out there on the ocean and the wind's blowing and you're on that sailboat, um, you can do you can do uh, two things. You can panic. You can panic and let just let the storm just capsize you and you're done, right? You're done. Or you can you can uh, you can learn how to use that storm. You can learn how to use that storm. You can learn how to use the, the wind, right? The wind can take you out of that storm if you know how to sail. If you set your sails in the right direction, that wind can take you out of that storm, right? So uh, I'm not a sailor. You know, maybe what I said doesn't make sense, but. My, the point is, you got to use what's around you, even if it's a chaotic environment, it's chaotic and you don't know what to do. Use what's around you. And what I'm trying to stress here is that we have a labor shortage, right? We got a labor shortage. We've got mil millions of, of trade jobs that are that have become open because of these economic uphe upheavals that we've had in the last 20 years, right? Two major ones, right? The longest, the longest one since the Great Depression in 1930, we had was this last one back in 2007, 2008. Okay, and. Uh, this last one, the pandemic. Okay, the people that the people that that are that are calm in the storm, the people that are calm in the storm, they see the opportunities open up. Everybody else panics. You know, everybody else panics. They sell, they sell this stock. They they run through and fro, and they get you know. At the end of the day, they didn't batten down the hatches. They didn't throw the anchors out, and uh, they got they got pummels. You know. Hey, very good life notes. Yeah, just keep reminding those around you that are around you or the parents. Uh, at their wits end to consider vocational skills they are necessary yes absolutely Perry your life notes thanks for that yes that's I'm gonna keep reminding everybody every time I come on this live guys uh, I didn't come on to YouTube just to you know talk about the latest dance or something like that no this is this is this really means uh, a lot to, to to me personally right uh, is to put content out there uh, on these platforms to reach somebody make somebody change their mind or give them or give them some sense of direction as far as the trades and the opportunities that it opens up for them right and um it, it doesn't matter the age right you can get into it at any age and and you know you, you can really take care of yourself in that respect so that's what i'm about that's what the calibrate tools and diy challenge is about and i love educating all my uh, all my viewers and everybody that comes on to hear what i gotta say okay guys Absolutely, Perry Girl Life Notes. Yeah, so take advantage of this labor shortage, guys. Like I said, bricklayers, plumbers. And like I said before, I know it's hot. You know, they got this heat wave out there. You know, a lot of people aren't even thinking about <laughs> getting out there and you know, humping some bricks or something. But yeah, you know, it's not going to be hot forever. Um, um, electricians, HVAC techs, you know, appliance technicians, you know, uh, all that. Plumbers, guys. I mean, come on. Uh, Perry Girl Life knows here on the radio here on the radio corporations are paying fifty five hundred dollars sign sign up bonuses to be a bus driver for school district school district in L.A. County. Yeah. Yeah, guys. There you go. I mean, so much opportunities are opening up right in the building trades and the transportation trades. Um, all of that, all, you know, because they, they need people. Right. I mean, you just don't understand. They, you have the upper hand right now. You have the upper hand to go out there and grab this stuff. Whereas before, you know, it'll take forever for you to get in. Now you can get in. I'm talking about unions. If you want to get into a union, great. If you want to just go out there and, and start, you know, start your own outfit, you can do that too. Daryl, the finisher. I was working in materials testing 
until the retirement math wasn't looking good. Hmm, I get it. I started my business and quit four years ago. Didn't want to wait until it was too late. That's a smart man right there. You know, he, he saw the writing on the wall. You know, he saw the writing on the wall. He realized that he realized that <clears throat> the retirement packages of today, you know, uh, it, it won't it won't hack. It won't hack it, guys. I mean, with inflation and everything else going up because of the wars and 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 you know, pan, pandemics and all this stuff, and and like I said, labor shortage, rising prices. I mean, these retirement packages. I mean, they're, they're taking them away. They're cut. They can't afford to pay you all that money anymore, right? Because they they themselves are, 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 are these companies are suffering. Like they can't afford to pay you all that, right? So you gotta you gotta think of different ways. You gotta think outside the box. You gotta think outside the box, guys, when it comes to your future, because time will go by. Like I said, it will fly by like that, guys. Okay. So you gotta be on the ball. You gotta be on the ball. Every step you make has to has to solidify uh, a future for yourself, right? At least something that will pay the bills in your later years. Um, very good luck, notes. Uh, LA Trade Tech has an electrical program. You get paid while you learn and prepare to become a, a journeyman. See, that's the best. That's the best thing you want to get into. You want to get into a program that'll pay you while you learn. Apprenticeships are great for that. Yeah. So, Daryl Fincher, my my first construction job was being an insulator. Blowing attics in the summer was rough. I bet, man, that that stuff getting in your lungs and stuff. I'm sure you wore a respirator and all that. But dang, you know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta put that suit on, get up in that hot attic, and and deal with that. You know what I'm saying? But this, this all, all that, all that does, guys, is build character. You know, you get out there and you do the hard work for a while, when you, when your body can take it, and it builds character. You can go, you know, now you know you can, you know you can go out there and do it again, and you know what to do. You can probably start your own insulation business and hire somebody else to get up there, and be in a hot attic and blow out stuff for you. Uh, very good life. Those cable installers also under that program. You're starting at 30 to 30, 55 bucks an hour. Absolutely, guys. I just, uh, I was at the, uh, like I said, at the nonprofit um, that, that I uh, that I work with. Um, uh, a previous student came by and he came from one of the roughest lifestyles that you could hear about. I mean, the guy was shot multiple times, shot in the head, all this stuff. You know, apparently he was still supposed to be here because he's here now. But he uh, he went through the program and he wel went through the welding program. He found out he realized he was very good at it. Uh, he stayed on. He stayed on to the program till he got another opportunity somewhere else. And uh, I think right now he's making one hundred twenty bucks an hour, one hundred twenty bucks an hour, guys. OK, I think he works on steam, steam engine operators yeah, as a steam engine operator and uh, something else. But guys, I mean, like I said, that's. <laughs> I mean, guys, you got people getting out of college, like sometimes getting their master's degrees and not even making that much. OK, but like I said, most people, they, they have the, the perception of the they have the dirty job syndrome. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's too dirty for me. I'm not going to do that. You know, that's for somebody. That's for those people over there. Well, yeah, you might be surprised. You might be surprised, guys. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, I, hey, I hear you, Daryl. I mean, getting up in that, you know, it builds character when you can get out there and work hard for a while. I mean, you don't have to do it forever, okay? So, I mean, nobody's telling you you got to do backbreaking work forever, okay? But it definitely can, uh, it definitely can set you up. Yeah, once again, Perigo Life Notes, railroads, the railroads, right? They're offering stuff. I mean, there's a shortage everywhere. Auto mechanics, like like Perigo Life Notes says, a railroad. I mean uh all kinds of, everywhere everywhere guys just look it up google it if you don't if you don't believe me okay so i'll just give you some tips here i mean what daryl the finisher say just look at his look at his look at his uh look at his comments you know yeah so guys yeah um you know you don't have to you don't have to be super talented i mean a lot of these programs they will train you they will train you in what you need to do okay and uh, they'll set you up because the economy cannot, the economy cannot function without skilled trades. I mean, you need, I don't care what you, what you think about skilled trades, whether it's a dirty job or not, you need, you need skilled trades in any economy. You need to build infrastructure. I mean, you need bridges, you need roads, you need, 
you know, you need buildings, you know, you need people to come in and fix things. You need HVAC guys. You need, I mean, you need, come on. It's just, do I really need to tell you? I mean, so if you, if you really having doubts, you're looking down on it. I mean, it's just like truckers, right? I mean, people look at truckers, uh, Oh, you dirty trucker. <laughs> hey, I've been a trucker for a long time. So, um, but guess what? You, you wouldn't have anything that you have right now without, without trucking, right? Without those guys and those big rig trailers, bringing them to, to you. Okay. So, um, we need to, we need to change our perception of the skilled trades and, and countries or communities, nations that, that respect and revere the builders, the, the hands-on people. Um, I would fear to say that they're, they, um, they have a, a, a healthier, uh, maybe even a happier, happier economy, right? But hey, we like to outsource stuff over here. Outsourcing, like I said before, isn't new, but you can't outsource everything, man. You got to maintain some level of autonomy when it comes to building your own infrastructure, right? You can't outsource it to everybody. Come on. Crazy. Yeah. So. So come on in, guys. By the way, this this live is um, this live is sponsored by www.exacttac.com. That's the flagship product of the Calibrate Tools DIY channel. And I want you guys to look out for the Calibrate.com website, which is in, uh, under construction right now, where we'll be coming out with uh, more products and courses to help support the channel. Uh, so just give it some time. Um, I'd say in the next next month or so, next month or so, I should be up. Um, but we want, I want I want to serve you guys. At the same time, the channel has to maintain itself. But I'm not asking for anything for free. I want to offer you something, you know, for your for your hard earned hard earned dollars there. So just look out for Calibrate.com website. And if you want to get a nice picture hanging tool uh, as a flagship product, go to go to www.exacttech.com. Check it out. And if you like it, it's a great gift item, guys. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Um, what else are we going to talk about here to, concerning the best skill trades to get into? Um, well, I did. We did say that the the top three that are in demand right now is um, brick layers. Yes, a brick layer. Okay, and I know what you're thinking. I don't want to lay bricks, but somebody out there does. Somebody out there has the skills, and they love doing it. There's a lot of job. There's a lot of brick laying jobs out there. Uh, and that's actually the highest on the list. Uh, carpenters, carpenters. I mean, come on, right? Who, who doesn't like a good carpenter, right? Carpenters are in demand, like I don't know what, guys, and plumbers as well. All the basic staple trade jobs or trade trade uh, positions are are in so much demand right now. Okay, so much, but you got to take advantage of the opportunity before it closes, because once again, if these these um, general contractors can't they can't fill the jobs they're not going to bid on on as many projects and then that's just gonna you know it's just gonna turn around and just implode on itself right so it's best to go out there and help us fill the help help just help the economy period let's go fill these jobs let's go fill these these positions right and don't think of it as a job think of it as something that can get you to your where you want to be right you because you can go yeah, you, know, you can go get a job somewhere else at a department store or at a whatever. I don't know. And uh, but with a skilled trade, you can take that with you wherever you go. You get fired on a regular old job. You know, you what? You know, you can't take that anywhere. Now you got to start all over again. With a skilled trade, you can take that wherever you go in the world. Okay. And uh, yeah. All right. All right, guys. So, hopefully, uh, you guys get where Calibrate Tools and DIY is coming from. This is what I'm all about. Okay, I'm all about putting this, pushing this message out, and I'm gonna keep doing it as long as I'm out here, as long as I'm breathing. Okay, because I'm here for you guys. So, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut the live down, and I uh, hope you guys stay cool out there. Okay, stay cool out there. I know, you know, I know you got a heat wave. Take care of yourself if you're out there in the trades and you're working outside and all this stuff. Your health, your well-being comes first, okay, besides the money, right? So don't overwork yourself. And if you feel like, you know, you're being treated unfairly on the job, hey, there's uh, – that's another reason, too. 
Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of reasons why a lot of trade tradesmen uh, leave jobs, and there's a shortage because they don't get treated well on the job. You know, they don't even get treated on the job well on the job site. Daryl the finisher, even though insulating was hard. I learned all the phases of residential construction. Absolutely. I also worked on commercial and industrial job sites. I learned a lot, which helped me start my business 15 years later. Absolutely, guys. The great thing about working, and, I, and I, I'm going to just say, say a few more words, is that if you're on a job site uh, and you have a particular skill trade that you're working on, whether it's electrician or insulation, or, you're around a lot of other tradesmen. You see, you can learn. You're pretty much, you know, if you, if you keep your eyes open, you can learn. You can learn all, uh, a, about a lot about the other trades because they're all around you. You know, you got the finisher, you got the finisher, you got your carpenter, you got your plumber, you got your concrete guy. You know, all that. You may have your solar installed. You got. And sometimes they come at different times, but you can learn a lot. Just like Daryl said, he was around a lot of other, uh, other other trades, and he learned. Right, he learned. Uh, when I worked at a couple of metal plants, the welders made all the money. Yeah, absolutely, guys. People have no idea what a good welder can make. Yeah, welders, uh, they can make some good money, guys. I'm telling you, you know. Uh, and I know there's a lot of automation coming down the pike. And automation is actually not bad. It can take away a lot of back-breaking work. Um, uh, but if you if you get into, a, get into a particular area where you see automation coming, well, just pivot, you know. Learn the skill and learn how to fix the, the, the robots or program the robots that are going to do the automation. Simple as that. You know, people think, oh, robots are going to take over the world. Uh, not necessarily. They can if you have the, the, the people behind them are that corrupt that they want that kind of matrix like world. But yeah, I mean, but you can't you can't avoid it. Automation automation is there, you know, at, at the different ports. Uh, around the country, they have robots carrying those big metal containers. I see them all the time. They have the manless machines, and okay, that's doing it. You got, I mean, come on, you got drones, you got all kinds of stuff out there, right? But if you if you set yourself up right, you can be the one programming them, you can be the one fixing them. You can, you know, when they when they bump into something and, and, and damage, get damaged. Guess what? You're gonna need a welder to fix it, <laughs> right? Um, it, right on the spot, you know what I'm saying? Unless you have another robot to come out there and weld it or something like that. But for the most part, the trades where you know where, where human beings are are necessary, that's not going away anytime soon. Okay, even though you may see that see it, human beings being replaced in certain areas, it's not going to totally happen. So don't worry about that. All right, guys, I appreciate you coming in and uh, listen to me rant. Um, but like I said, I'm going to keep pushing this message out there. That's what Calibrate Tools and DIY Channel is all about. You know, it's about the next generation of builders of our infrastructure and uh, the, the the people that drive the economy. OK, they keep it stable. Right. That's what we want. Right. And the trades are, are the trades, the building trades, especially uh, is critical to that, guys. So appreciate you guys coming on listening. Thanks for thanks for coming in and joining the chat. Daryl, the finisher, Perigold Life Notes. OK. Uh, at way. I appreciate all you guys. Okay. And I'll see you guys next time, Tuesday at seven. Have a good one guys. Lee Harris, by the way, take care.